Hello, welcome to this video. Let's get a complete overview on Apple Final Cut Pro X 2019 with simple and quick steps. Make sure to check out our YouTube channel and visit our website to get extra tips, news, tutorials, and giveaways on other outstanding products. Final Cut Pro X is a professional video editing product with advanced features to realize custom videos and slideshows such as effects, transitions, pieces of text and corrections on videos, photos, and audio. This can be considered an upgraded version of the freeware Apple iMovie. The main workspace of Final Cut Pro is made by a video preview and several panels you close and open by using their buttons in the top right corner. On the left side, you have the browser, where you can import and check your media files. On the right side, you have the inspector, with the properties and options to adjust your video content. At the bottom, you have the timeline, which is the place where you add and edit your files to realize your final video. To start working on a video project, you have to import all the source files you need inside the browser panel, such as audio files, videos, pictures, and photos. All these files are grouped inside collections called events, usually representing each single project you made inside Final Cut Pro. You can create a new collection by right-clicking on an empty space and going to New Event. At this point, you can import files by dragging and dropping these inside the event directly from Finder or use the Import Media button on the right or at the top to browse for your source files. On the new page, choose where to look for your files on the left and browse them at the bottom, checking the preview above. On the right, you can adjust several import options, including the destination event. Once you go to Import at the bottom, the selected files are added with their thumbnails inside the event chosen and under Smart Collections, according to their kind. You can also hover over each thumbnail to play back the file and check its content on the video preview. To remove any event, just right-click on it and go to Move Event to Trash. This also removes all the files contained inside it. With the source files ready, create your new project by either using the New Project button on the timeline or go to File, New, and then to Project. Fix the project name, the event to use, and other options inside custom settings, such as video format, resolution, frame rate, and audio options. Once you go to OK, the new empty project opens on the timeline and also gets listed under Projects inside Smart Collections, with all other projects you made inside Final Cut Pro. You can switch to another project by double-clicking on it or using the arrows above the timeline. With the project open on the timeline, drag and drop your source files inside it to start working. In addition, you can also add extra content from other sections of the browser, such as tracks from iTunes, GarageBand, and the sound effect list. And, also text templates and visual samples ready to use. The files added inside the timeline are shown as blocks called clips, collected inside rows called tracks. Videos and pictures have their file name on top, several thumbnails showing their content, and, in case clips have audio, also a small audio waveform at the bottom. Audio clips have their name and audio waveform with no thumbnails. The clip's color can be set by changing the role by right-clicking on these. To adjust the clip thumbnails and the zoom level on the timeline, use the Frame button on the extreme left. To check the visual and audio content in progress, you have to use the Video Preview on top. When you hover over the timeline, the preview shows the video frame under the red marker that is under your cursor. When you do not hover over it, the preview shows the project under the gray marker that you can fix by clicking on the timeline. 
This marker is also the starting point when you play back the content in real time with either the player or the spacebar key. You can use this button in the bottom right corner to play back in full screen mode and adjust the preview options under View. Let's see how to edit the timeline clips by using the Select tool. To move a clip through time or between different tracks, just click and drag it. Video frames with audio are part of a unique clip, so if you want to move and edit these independently, just right click on the clip and go to Detach Audio. The way you move clips changes depending on the track they lay on. The central track is the main project content that is completely filled and does not admit any time gap between clips. Above and below the main track, you have several secondary tracks used to place all the clips that overlap the main content in time. On these tracks, you can move clips freely and also create time gaps. When clips overlap, the order of visibility is set in order to show all the clips on the top tracks in front of all the other clips staying on the lower tracks. Audio clips with no visual content are all placed below the main track. In addition, the overlap clips on secondary tracks get linked to the clips inside the main track. This way, when you move the main clip, also all the visual and audio clips linked to it will move together with it. To cut, copy, and paste a clip, just click on it to select it and use Command and X, C, and V. Use Command and Z to undo any action if you make a mistake. To cut just a part of the clip, just enable the Range Selection tool. Click and drag on the interested part of the clip and then cut. To edit multiple clips together, just select these all by clicking and dragging on the timeline with the Select tool before making modifications. To split a clip into pieces, enable the Blade tool and click on the clip directly. To adjust the clip duration and time, enable the Select tool and then click and drag from its edges. This affects video and audio clips heavily, since this cuts part of their content when reducing their duration. You can adjust the clip's length by also adjusting their speed rate. Select the clip and use Command and R to show the Ret Time Editor. At first, this is in green color, with the clip speed set at normal or at 100%. You can edit it by dragging from its right edge, extending the clip to reduce its speed below 100%, and shorten the clip to fasten it over 100%. You can find additional retiming options by going to the down arrow and then to Custom. Use Command and R to hide the Retime Editor. The Inspector panel is used to adjust and edit the properties of the clip selected from the timeline, depending on their kind. When selecting visual clips, you can use the Video Inspector to correct its basic appearance with Blend Mode and its transparency level with opacity while checking the preview. Just make sure to place the gray marker on the clip to see the effect of your modifications. In addition, you can enable the Transform, the Crop, or the Distort button to adjust the clip appearance by editing the rectangle inside the preview. You can move and place the clip by clicking and dragging the rectangle and change the clip appearance by using its blue nodes. With Transform, these nodes scale the clip and the central one rotates it. You can also check the clip properties being edited on top. When enabling Crop, you choose between three options at the bottom. Use Trim and Crop to trim the clip freely or crop it by saving its aspect ratio. Choose Ken Burns to apply a pan and zoom effect by moving and editing the start and the end rectangles you see. Whereas, use Distort to distort the clip as you like. In the top right corner, 
use Reset to reset all the modifications made and Done to apply these. You can also enable and disable each correction by checking or unchecking these from the Inspector Panel. To apply corrections and adjustments on the visual clip colors, you have to switch to the Color Inspector. On top, choose the kind of correction to add from the list. For example, Color Board adjusts color, color intensity with saturation, and exposure level by moving the nodes on the graph. Representing the whole clip, Master, its darkest sides, shadows, its lighter side, highlights, and the midtones. Whereas Hue Saturation Curves changes the kind or the intensity of each specific color chosen from several points of the curve. Other corrections, such as Color Curves and Color Wheels, correct color and its intensity with different interface and options. Check these out. All the corrections applied to the clips are listed under the Effects section inside the Video Inspector and can be enabled and disabled with the square button on the left and changed in properties by double clicking on their colored button. When selecting audio clips, the Audio Inspector opens, which allows to edit the audio volume, apply audio filters such as equalization, and adjust the output sound and environment with pan. You can play back the audio clip quickly by hovering its waveform on Audio Configuration. When selecting video clips, you get both the video and the audio inspector with the visual and audio options just seen. You can use the Effects Browser on the right to add amazing visual and audio effects to the clip selected on the timeline. Browse inside the list and hover over any effect to check it out on the preview. Then, just drag and drop the effect on the clip to apply it. The effect will be added inside the Effects section on the video or the audio inspector, where you can enable, disable these, and adjust their properties. To remove all effects from a selected clip, go to Edit and then to Remove Effects. Inside Final Cut Pro, you can also add amazing transitions to introduce or end clips in a great way. Audio transitions affect the clip volume in time and can be applied by moving the lateral nodes on the audio waveform. Whereas visual transitions change the clip appearance in time. When you select a clip and use Command and T, you will add fade transitions to both the sides of the clip, represented as independent gray blocks that change the clip opacity in time. You can use the Transition Browser to apply visual transitions with special effects. You can drag and drop these on clips or on existing transitions present. To adjust the transition properties, just select it and use the Transition Inspector while checking the video preview. To remove the transition, just select its block and cut it. You can also add pieces of text inside your project by using the Titles section of the browser. Hover over any text template to check it on the preview and drag to drop it on the timeline to add it. Title clips are shown as violet blocks that can be moved and modified just like other clips. These contain a piece of text over a transparent background that shows the project content that is placed behind the clip text. If text does not overlap the clips, the background will remain in black color. You can use the Inspector Panel to adjust the text font, style, size, color, and effects. The text distribution, alignment and spacing, and the basic video and color properties as seen for visual clips. To type inside, just double click on the text clip and use the arrows on the preview to edit the following or the previous piece of text. Now let's see how to render and create your final video. To export your video, just click on the Share button in the top right corner. 
Here you can choose to upload your video on social websites such as Facebook, YouTube, or Vimeo, or send your video onto a DVD disc. Use Master File to render your video with custom options. Type Information and Metadata under Info and switch to the Settings page to fix the video format and resolution. For example, choose Computer to use the standard .mp4 format or Audio Only to render just the audio part of the project. By default, the timeline content is rendered from the beginning till the end. You can render just a part of it by enabling the Range Selection tool and selecting the time range interested. Thanks for watching this video. Visit our channel and our official website for more tips, news, and tutorials on Mac products.